Hi there, welcome to this build of a 1950s futuristic looking flying wing and this is a great design by Peter Fisher and we're working from a really nice set of plans which we downloaded from Derek Scott's website and there'll be a link in the description below. Now if you've been watching this build you'll know that in the last video we got this covered in 38 micron laminating film and on the whole, <laughs> on the whole, it went on pretty good. There were some tense moments and there are still a few wrinkles, which to be honest, I'm not going to try and do anything with because it was difficult enough trying to get this on with this compound curve. And I think that actually it looks fine. And once we get the tissue on, we won't notice it. So the tissue, we're going to be starting to cover this today in a really nice Japanese Asuka tissue. If I just hang that up. Now we're going to be using a wet strength tissue. As I say, it's a Asuka tissue. And I got this from Free Flight Supplies in the UK. And there'll be a link to the website where you can get this in the description below this video. Now we're going to be using two different colours. We're going to be using this really nice red. I mean, it's a lovely, lovely lightweight tissue, this. And as I said, wet strength is great. And we're going to be using this blue. So we're going to be using a combination of the two colours. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk about design first. I think the, the design is still work in progress. But essentially, the underside, and <laughs> I need to get this back down, the underside we're going to do completely red, I think. And the upper side we're going to do in red, red, with kind of a, a blue kind of st broad stripe getting thinner to a point down the back here of the blue. And one of the reasons that I'm joining the tissue on the front is because if I don't and I try to do this in a solid panel, it's, it's, it's not going to work. Because of this compound curve, it's going to be really tricky. So I think having three, <coughs> excuse me, three pieces will make that easier. <laughs> Famous last words. Or slightly easier. So we're going to do that in three pieces. The, the fuselage, I was going to do in red. But I was wondering last night whether to do this blue section, uh, sorry, this top section here in blue. So um, I'm going to leave that until I've got the rest of the, the, the wing done and then I'll make a decision on that depending on how it looks. I'll just drape a bit on and, uh, and see. Now, actually I said in the last video we put the laminating film on. That's not true. In the last, the last video we put the windscreen on. It was the video before that we did the laminating film. So. The underside, as I said, it's going to be all red, and I'm going to try and do that in one piece. Not much of a curve here on this leading edge, so I'm hoping we can get that done. It might be tricky, and we might have to just put a couple of nicks in and a couple of really thin pieces of tissue to, to fill some gaps. But I'm hoping I can do that in one go. I think it's worth putting it on in one go and then having to cut it and just to get it right and then filling it with a little bits of tissue. I think that will look just as good as if I try and do it in sections because we'll end up with big seams then. So let's go for it. Let's see if we can do it in one go. Now to put this tissue on, just hang that up. I'm going to be putting the tissue, once I've cut it to size, on top of the wing or on the underside of the wing, on top of the laminating film anyway. And I'm going to be spraying it with water to dampen it down, soak it, stretch it out. I've got a, a brush I'm going to be using to smooth it out and hopefully get it wrinkle free. And once we know we're happy with that, and maybe we have to put the cuts in at that stage to get it to sit properly, I'm going to be brushing on this um, uh, polyurethane water-based clear varnish. Now this is clear matte. Eventually for the, the second and top coat I'll probably use a satin because I think that's probably perhaps a nicer finish but I'll make a decision on that. 
Now, unfortunately, Wilco have closed down. Very sad. It's a UK company that I really liked. But it's, uh, it's, I think it's probably a generic water-based varnish. And I'm sure there's other brands which are just as good as this. And it, this is diesel proof, so it'll be fine for this model. So what I'm going to do now is uh, get this uh, tissue cut and I'm going to be using the wing template that I um, uh, did to build the wing just to cut out the tissue the right size, trying to be economical here and, um, and get this cut. And there's only one way really that we can put the tissue on this to get it. Normally I would think about the direction of the grain because tissue has a grain and which way is the best way to put it but we don't have a choice with this if we're going to do it in one panel. So I'll get this cut out, get the wing down, and we'll get that sprayed, get it watered down, and see how it fits. Right, well, I've got the wing set out now on the table, and I've got towels, and I always say this whenever I'm doing any covering or building, towels are brilliant. They stop your model from sliding around, you can pack them under, I've got an old t-shirt here, uh, just, I don't know if you can see it, just out of shot I think just to prop it up and to get it stable and actually I'm going to get another towel and I've just got a couple of old cloths here and I'm going to put that on the wing here and that will just hold it in place and uh, I just need to prop that a little bit so we don't get the light on it but it's just really good to have these cloths to uh, to stop the the wing moving around or whatever you're working on now I've cut the tissue and I've used this wing as I said and a really sharp scalpel will cut this nicely um, if your scalpel's blunt it's just going to rip it so you really want to uh, to make sure your scalpel's nice and sharp now I am going to have to cut this again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim out a section there for the the pinch I don't know whether that shows but we've got the pinch there to pick it up and launch it and I'm going to put in a, a slight cut here so that folds down as well as comes along the fuselage here. Right, well I've got this trimmed up now and, uh, and ready to uh, spray with water. Now we're going to spray it and then just give it 10 minutes just to um, kind of relax really and expand and, and just to sit down properly on the fuselage. Right, well you can see we've got this soaked with water now and uh, we're just going to leave this, just make sure the ends are done, uh, we're just going to leave this to, um, to, to get fully wet and soaked and, uh, and to relax and maybe even stretch a little bit and then we're going to work it with this big brush to uh, make sure or, or to try and flatten it out and get it covered properly. So I'll come back in a bit. Right, you can see this tissue now is as we left it, and I've I've given it about ten minutes to uh, to let the water soak in, and I'm just going to start brushing it now to get out the wrinkles, and I think I'll get this back edge done first. Now, I guess we should be working from the centre here because we don't want to to move it where this pinch point is. Now. There's various hatches here, there's hatches for the radio gear, hatches for the servos, which we're just covering over at this point with both the laminating film and the, uh, and the tissue. And we'll cut those out afterwards and we can still use a hot iron on the laminating film once we've got the tissue on. It will still, uh, it will still work and it won't damage the finish that we've, we've got on the tissue. So now you can see we're just working our way and we may need to just pick up this corner just to, there we go, just to pull that a little bit tighter. You can see this is absolutely gorgeous tissue to work with. I love the, the colours and it is a fairly limited colour range. I think it's uh, yellow, orange, red and blue and uh, just plain white. See now that is sticking down nicely still a few wrinkles and uh, ready to be smoothed out and now we're coming to this uh, this lovely tricky edge which actually isn't looking 
too bad. You see, we need the water to have soaked through to allow the kind of the surface tension or, or the water anyway, whatever, to, to allow it to stick nicely to the laminating film. And I'm just going to put a bit more on this because I really want this, uh, this, this front edge nice and wet um, so we can kind of manipulate it, I guess. Now I might just put in the odd snip here. I don't like cutting it with scissors because it doesn't even see there, it didn't cut very well. Maybe I need some better scissors. There we go. So now we'll just carry on working this. So I'll carry on working this and then we'll come back and have a look once I'm, uh, once I'm happy with it. Well, I've now got this nice and flat. There's still the odd, just little area lifted, but that'll soon go down once we start putting the polyurethane on. But this front edge has come on really nice. I'm really pleased with it. I had to reposition it a couple of times just to get the, um, the cut right here, and I might need to just touch that up a little bit when I do the side. But that is looking really good. Now, I'm going to put the polyurethane on any second, but I'm just going to dab off some of the excess water. Now we have to be really careful when we do this because if we're not careful when we lift up the tissue, the, um, the, the paper towel, we will actually lift off the tissue with it. So we need to just, I mean we don't really need to get a lot of the water off, it's just if it's, uh, you know, quite excessive. And uh, there are a few patches where it's a bit damp. But that is looking really good now, I am really pleased with that. It's gone on better than I, 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 I thought it might do <laughs> along this front. We haven't had to put in any incisions. Now I've left the tissue hanging all around and I'm going to put the polyurethane on now and then when it started to dry and it's kind of just slightly malleable I will then go around and trim it. If there's any rough bits once we've trimmed it and it's dried fully then we can always stick those down with the iron. The iron just seems to melt the, uh, the polyurethane. So I'm going to put this on and I always do this first coat a little bit more liberal than I do the second coats. And we want to make sure we get this nice and saturated through because when it is saturated through it really sticks well to the um, uh, to the laminating film underneath. So I'm just going to go around now and do this. What we have to, just one thing we have to be careful of is that you do get little bubbles that develop under the tissue and I'm not sure if they're water bubbles or air bubbles, they're probably water bubbles, but we just need to keep an eye on that and if they appear we just brush them and they disperse. It's not a big problem. Uh, but it, it's something that we do need to just be mindful of when we're putting this on. So I will get this done now and we'll have a look at when it's done. Right, well, I've now got this polyurethane and you can see I've gone over onto the laminating film there. I will wipe that up a little bit but it doesn't really matter because this stuff is so thin and dries kind of fairly thin. Now. There were a few water bubbles but I just worked them through the edge and then they just dropped off of the leading edge here. Now that has gone on really sweet. I don't know, yeah that is looking okay isn't it on the camera. Just uh, checking the camera angle there. And um, I just I think I'm almost done now, I'm going to leave it. I did just damage the tissue a little bit on the underside here. Um, and to be honest it's where I would caught it with a scalpel earlier and, 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 rag, and made it a little bit ragged but I'm not too fussed about that on the underside there because um, <laughs> we won't see it <laughs> but, uh, but this is looking good I, I'm just there's no I, I'm just looking at this now and thinking whether to stop fiddling with it I think I will do because that is looking nice. But now is a critical stage and what I would say is don't walk away and go and have a cup of coffee. Um, get somebody to make the coffee and bring it to you because you need to keep an eye on this because 
Uh, you don't want the bubbles or wrinkles any developing and if they do you want to be there just to uh, take them out but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that I think that looks really nice and um, better than I could have hoped for in a way so I'm going to leave that now until it's almost dry and then I will go around with the scalpel and uh, and do these edges like I say we don't want to do the edges until they're almost dry or just kind of tacky really so it's not going to affect the rest of the wing uh, lifting this up a little bit to cut it I'm just making sure I've got this uh, stuck down here so that uh, when we cut it it'll be okay and I'm going to put a nick in the end of the wing there just to uh, there we go just to allow that to sit a little bit nicer on that edge but I will stop fiddling with it in a minute there we go that's it I'm done we'll leave that now and uh, we'll come back and have a look when it's almost dry for trimming right well this tissue is starting to look quite nice now you can see it's still damp but it, it is starting to dry so I thought I'd have a go at cutting this back edge now we really do need a new blade when we do this because if we've been using an old blade and we've cut some of the tissue with polyurethane on it'll have all polyurethane on it which will catch as we start to cut this so definitely a new really sharp scalpel blade and we're just going to lift this and actually this might need a little bit longer before we do it now that is cutting so I'm just lifting it up and just sliding the blade along very very carefully and there we go and now we'll come back this way it's actually pulling off the leading edge here a little bit so I'm we'll put on a little bit more polyurethane once I've done this but that Apologise if my fingers are in the way. But that's looking pretty good. We need to have our blade at quite an acute angle to get a nice smooth cut. Now I'm just going to go along with a, a brush I think, although that's sticking on with my fingers to be honest. I think that will be okay. So I will get this little bit done, I'll get the, I've done the leading edge and I'll get this end done. But you can see how well that trimmed with just a little bit of dry glue on it to um, just to hold it together. It, actually this is coming off, I will put a little bit of polyurethane on that with a fine brush. But if this had been just wet tissue, wet polyurethane tissue, it wouldn't have gone very well it would have it would have ripped so anyway I'll get the rest of this done get that stuck down and then we'll have a look at this when it's uh, when it's completely dry right well I've now got this more or less done it, it's still very well it's still damp but it's not going to shrink or uh, wrinkle anymore and I am really pleased with how that is looking how that's gone on really nice to have a good start so what I'm going to do now is get this other side finished so we've got the underside done and then we'll turn it over and we'll have a look at doing the top and the design we're going to do on that well we've got this done now and I am really really pleased with how this is looking it's still a little bit damp it's going to take uh, a while to dry and I'm going to leave this now overnight I don't want to uh, to put it on the bench and risk disturbing the tissue so I'm just going to hang that back up there and that will dry really nice now I've been working on some templates I've got the, uh, the, the the shape of the wing here and I've cut this into three sections which is going to make up the pattern on the top of the wing so we've got the red the blue and the red and so I'm going to get the tissue cut out and then we can have a look at that and then we'll get that covering put on but as I said, I'm going to let it dry overnight first. Right, well, this is lovely and dry now. It's had overnight to dry out and I'm, I'm still really pleased with how it's looking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to 
check these templates, get the tissue cut out and get this on. We'll have a quick look at how we're going to do this. So we've got our first template here which is going to be red and that's just going to go nice and tight up against the fuselage side. We're then going to put on another red template and that is going to come to about there like that and then we're going to have I'm going to do these two red pieces separately I'm going to wait for them to completely dry and then I am going to put a piece of blue down the middle you see I just need to adjust these the, the final piece of blue I won't cut until I've got the red on and I know exactly how big this needs to be and we're going to put it on with a, a just a oh, quarter of an inch not even that you know just four mil maybe something 316 um, overlap so that um, we've just got a little bit of an overlap there but we'll have a look at this as we go and I'm going to be using exactly the same techniques as I did on the underside so I won't be sort of filming it all we'll just have a look at uh, how it looks when we've got it on so I'll get on and get this tissue cut up just a, a quick comment about tissue and grain now tissue has a grain and this is running along the long length the grain and if you hold it up to the light you can see just faintly the grain in the tissue and it's important that we get the grain all in the right direction on these three templates even on the blue one if we don't it won't look right it will stand out so we need to make sure it's all lined up and even to the point where rather than having this you know sort of more economically that way and this one like that it's important we line these up so that the grain is continuous I just thought I'd mention that because it does make a difference to how it looks in the end okay well I've now got the tissue cut around the template and I used my <laughs> really sharp scalpel brand new blade and we can see the tissue just comes away here and we've left enough here for the overlap when that fits on and I've just been a little bit generous on these front and uh, on the on the uh, the, out, the tip here just so that to make sure we've got enough so I'm going to get these set up now and we will uh, start to get them fitted or put on right so we've got our tissue on we've got it cut up and we're ready to go but I thought I'd just show you what it looked like before I started so we've got the red obviously and then I'm going to do this piece first I'll then do that bit when this has started to dry and then probably tomorrow or after it's dried anyway we'll put on the blue down the middle but I just thought we'd have a quick look at that and I think having the joins here will hopefully make this compound curve a lot easier to go on but famous last words time will tell well I've got this all damp down now and ready to polyurethane and it's gone on really really nice and I thought it was worth just uh, just to, having a quick look at this stage having this break here has made all the difference I think this tissue has gone along this front edge lovely it's a little bit lumpy here but that's not the tissue's fault that's the um, the the laminating film underneath just the seam along here which I perhaps should have tried to do a little bit neater but these things really show up and, and you don't realize sometimes until it's a little bit too late but that is looking really good so I'm just going to go over check this again and um, and then dampen it uh, uh, just uh, take the water off a little bit that's what I was trying to say and then I think we are ready to put on the polyurethane but I'm really pleased with how that's uh, that's looking so far well this is looking great now I'm really pleased with how this is going you can see we've got all of the red on the wings now and we're ready to start adding a splash of color I think it was definitely a good decision to do this in three sections because this has gone around this compound curve really nice no problems at all really easily and now we've got this piece that hopefully 
should be really easy to go on which will just set that wing off absolutely lovely what I've done is these gaps here are very slightly different but I've tried to get them as as accurately the same as possible and, and you've got this grid from the the ribs and the spars which you can use to uh, to, to line up the tissue when you put the red on now I made or I cut out a piece of blue which was oversized I placed it on the fuselage and then I just lightly marked it with a pencil so that we just had a very small overlap 316 4 mil something like that and then trimmed it to size so now we just have that very tight overlap here I've then copied this and done another one which we've got here oops just under the wheel which we've got here which will go on the other side so essentially I made two identical pieces of blue so irrespective now of the overlap these pieces of blue will look identical on the top hopefully so I'm going to get these on in the same manner as I've done everything else and just to say before I even started this covering I did a little bit of a test on a, an old wing and some laminating film just to see what went best whether it was the uh, blue over the red or the red over the blue and actually the blue going over the top of the red gave me the best results which is good really because I think that's from an order point of view it's much easier to put the red on and then the blue I wouldn't have wanted to put the blue on first really so that worked out well so I'm going to get the blue on and get this fuselage done and then we'll be almost done well, I've now got the blue on and it's dry and I'm really pleased with how that's looking I'm going to start doing the sides of the fuselage now and I'm just going to rest it on this stool there's a weight there under the towel just to protect the wing and to stop it from sliding outwards the wheel at the front I'm just going to rest on the bench and I'm going to loop it in this bit of cord held under the weight and if we just hook that on there we go and that will just hold that while I work on it and I'll put that t-shirt uh, there just to hold it still and to be honest that is a really good work surface now I wouldn't <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to walk out the workshop and leave it for long but um, but I'm sure it'd be fine so we're going to start to get on this red tissue down that side now <laughs> well as you can see I have now got this wing finished uh, or at least covered there's still uh, things to do and uh, I still need to cut out the holes for the hatches and fit everything but the actual covering is finished and this splash of blue I think has really finished it off I am I'm really pleased with how this is looking and it's all of it has only had a single coat of the polyurethane as I'm putting the tissue on and so it's a little if you look closely you can see it's a little bit patchy where I've put the blue on the red but now this is going to need a, a, another coat just a very thin coat and that will even everything out and make it look really sweet I might even do two uh, two more coats I'll probably do two more around the engine bay where the fuel's going to be but probably not on the wings well I, I, I'll have to think about that but it definitely needs one more to, to get the finish just perfect and I said when I started this covering that I was using a, a, a matte polyurethane and I may well use a silk. I've actually decided I quite like the look of the matte on this. It just kind of adds to the, it, it makes it look a little bit stealthy, you know, a bit like, um, a, bit like a stealth bomber. So anyway, I'm going to leave it matte rather than try to add, uh, add a sheen to it. And I've started to do or some of the, the bits that go with it. I've got the, uh, the fins that just go on the outside edges. I've still got the aileron or elevons to do and the hatch covers. But the main fuselage now is done and we can see the underside there. And we started this off with a few, there were a few little wrinkles that I didn't want to try and get out of the laminating film because they'd been a little bit tricky and I didn't want to mess it up. 
and actually I can't see any of those wrinkles now it's gone on really nice and if you were watching the laminating film go on in a previous video you'll see we had a hole here that I blew in with a, with a hot air gun um, and, and that you can see it but it's not very noticeable at all and won't alter the, uh, the strength so I, I'm quite pleased that I, uh, I left that hole and uh, I've still got the fin somewhere it's over there there is a, a fin that goes down the centre which I haven't covered yet so I, I still need to do that but I am going to draw this video to a close because we've got the main fuselage done and you've seen the techniques you've seen how I've done it and hopefully you found that interesting and, and, and useful I, I love this technique and this tissue has gone on around this compound curve absolutely lovely so anyway Thanks very much for watching and please come and see how we get on in the next video where I think we are probably going to be starting to set this up. We're certainly going to be hinging the elevons and getting some of the, the electronics and the engine in I think. Maybe get it completely ready for the airfield, who knows. Thanks very much for watching.